Great. Well, thank you very much, everyone. On um, behalf of my colleagues, we'd really like to thank the conference and session organizers for the opportunity uh, to present our data regarding COPD in an international cohort of patients with HIV. Uh, I have no conflicts of interest to report. Uh, I thought I'd start this talk by just reviewing COPD a little bit. Um, so COPD stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Uh, this is a lung disorder that's characterized by several things. Uh, one in this cartoon you see here uh, is uh, emphysema, which is disruption of the alveolar attachments. There's also airway inflammation and airway fibrosis. Uh, this all leads to airways that are collapsible and narrowed, and as a result of this underlying process, air becomes trapped in the lungs. Um, and the, the, as a result of the air trapping, the chest becomes hyperinflated, uh, particularly with activity, and this is the reason that patients with COPD suffer from shortness of breath, um, and it can limit their ability to exert themselves. From a public health standpoint also, I will note that COPD is a major and rising global health problem. Between 1990 and 2010, uh, COPD moved up to now become the third leading cause of death in the world. Uh, this is uh, still higher than HIV and AIDS, which is here, but as you know, um, HIV also increases the risk of several other diseases on this list, including uh, coronary disease, ischemic heart disease, number one, pneumonia, number four, and lung cancer, number five. Uh, what I think fewer people realize, and perhaps more uh, realization of this nowadays, is that HIV also increases the risk of COPD. Now, the main risk factor for COPD still remains cigarette smoking. Uh, other sort of uh, identified risk factors include exposure to things like biomass fuel smoke, so using wood inside the home to heat or uh, cook inside the home, and also alpha-1 anatrypsin deficiency, which is a genetic disorder most common in northern European populations. However, multiple observational studies have also found that HIV is an independent risk factor for COPD, and this is even in studies that have adjusted for the high prevalence of cigarette smoking in patients with HIV infection. Uh, the mechanisms for this aren't entirely clear. Hypotheses out there include that this may be related to inflammation from HIV infection, uh, perhaps lung infections due to HIV infection, oxidative stress induced by HIV, um, or perhaps even the antiretroviral therapy, ART itself, uh, suggested by two small observational studies. Um, in terms of the prevalence of COPD when this has been looked at, it's been highly variable, anywhere from three to 23%. Uh, I will note that I think a lot of the reason for this variability is most of these studies have been single center studies, uh, studying very different populations. Um, and the largest, and the relatively small, with the largest sample here being 316 patients. And so we set out in this study, um, in this cross-sectional analysis, to uh, assess the COPD prevalence in a large, multi-site and multinational sample of persons with HIV. We did this within the uh, context of the START trial, which uh, many of you are familiar with. Uh, START uh, is uh, enrolling and designed to sort of compare the effects of immediate versus deferred antiretroviral therapy on AIDS and non-AIDS events in those naive to ART with baseline CD4 counts above 500. For the pulmonary substudy, we had a few additional exclusions. Um, one was uh, that there, or inclusion above age of above 25. The reason for that, uh, study inclusion criteria was that this relates to our primary outcome longitudinally looking at lung function decline and that those under the age of 25 may actually gain some lung function over time. We also excluded patients with asthma and this is due to the, the primary outcome lung function being highly variable and somewhat unreliable when you have asthma. And then we also excluded patients who had a contraindication to either spirometry or the use of albuterol or salbutamol. The main method here was post-bronchodilator spirometry. And so what we did was we uh, did use portable spirometer devices. Um, and this is a picture. So at the beginning of the study, I actually had a, a full head of hair. <laughs> um, and so it's, to me, this is proof that undertaking these sort of projects causes premature aging in principal investigators, at least. <laughs> um, but these portable devices are actually well validated against more formal spirometry. Uh, every test uh, was quality controlled reviewed uh, per, by me personally. This is an example of a report. 
Uh, so we look at quality. We also, the numbers that we get from this include these, uh, FEV1, forced expiratory volume in one second. This is how much air you can blow out of your lungs in one second. FVC, which is how much air you can blow out of your lungs in the entire maneuver, and then the, the ratio of FEV1 to FVC. Uh, most of us should be able to exhale most of our air within the first one second of a forced effort like this. However, patients with COPD, again because of emphysema, uh, collapsible airways, because of inflammation and fibrosis, these airways are narrowed down, and so the end result is that it uh, becomes more difficult to exhale air out of the lungs, and air exit out of the lungs is delayed. This is expressed as an FEV1 to FVC ratio, and we define for this cross-sectional analysis COPD as a ratio that's below the fifth percentile uh, as predicted by a predictive nomogram. So we conducted this study and over, uh, invented, eventually ended up enrolling 1,026 participants uh, from 80 sites in 20 countries. Uh, so we achieved what I think is an excellent globally representative sample, um, unique to the previous studies of COPD and HIV. Of the 1,026 participants, uh, you'll note that they're relatively young with a median age of 36 years. We achieve almost 30% females, which I think is also unique in this area. Uh, relatively recent diagnosis uh, due to enrollment in the START trial, uh, so the years of known HIV diagnosis was a median of 1.2 years, and we had almost 30% uh, current active smokers. There are a lot of data on this slide, but I just wanted to point out, uh, draw your attention to the general observation that the demographics did vary by region, uh, particularly when considering things like gender and smoking status. So for example, in Africa, we mostly enrolled women who had never smoked in their lives. And compared to Europe, Israel, Australia, where we mostly enrolled men uh, who were frequently current or former smokers. And I think these differences will be relevant to the upcoming slides looking at COPD prevalence. So of, the, uh, of those 1,026 participants that we enrolled, 988 had high quality spirometry. So 96% had excellent uh, spirometry quality. And these are the data that I'll be showing you from here on out. We found that the overall COPD prevalence was 6.8%. Uh, this is within the range reported by previous studies. And most of the COPD was relatively mild or moderate in terms of the degree of impairment in FEV1. What I'm showing here are kind of generally used COPD cut points for FEV1 impairment. So greater than 80% of predicted would be mild COPD. 50 to 79% would be moderate COPD uh, with very few with more severe or very severe COPD. Uh, when looking by region again, we found a lot of variation with uh, ranges as low as 2% in Asia up to 9.1% in Europe, Israel, Australia. We also found that this varied by both smoking status and age. Um, and I think these are the more important data from this baseline cross-sectional analysis. So that among current smokers, we found that nearly 12% had COPD. And then when we looked at age, we looked at the highest age quartile, which was ab above the age of 44 years, 9.2% um, had COPD. Also of interest, I don't show the numbers here, but of those 67 participants uh, with COPD, nearly half of them reported lifelong non-smoking. So in order to attempt to understand a little bit more about whether it was region, smoking, and or age uh, driving the COPD we observed, we conducted multivariate linear regression with FEV1, FVC ratio as the dependent variable. We found that older age and pack years of smoking were the strongest, uh, had the strongest associations with lower, i.e. worse, FEV1 to FVC ratio. Gender did not have an effect, but the regions had significantly different beta coefficients. Um, and I think this variability by region, uh, it's, it's a little hard to know exactly what's driving that. I think it could potentially be related to other non-smoking exposures, things like biomass fuel exposures, uh, occupational dust and smoke exposures. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't collect such data, so, but we are currently in discussions about how we might uh, try to collect the data going forward, particularly for sites uh, in the developing world. So in conclusion, we successfully enrolled over 1,000 patients with HIV from 80 sites in 20 countries into a spirometry sub-study. 
We found that COPD was not uncommon, being present in 6.8% of this sample. COPD appeared to relate strongest to smoking and aging, and it varied by global region. I think the clinical implications of our data uh, would highlight uh, the, the importance of smoking cessation, especially when it comes to COPD. There are obviously many other benefits to smoking cessation. And I think we are, our data also suggests that as patients with HIV continue to age, that we're likely to see more and more COPD emerge. And as a result of that, I think it's important to familiarize HIV providers with the tools for COPD screening, diagnosis, and management. I think in terms of future directions, uh, our prospective data will also be quite important. Uh, this is highlighted by one small uh, single center study uh, that I show here, 63 patients, where they did spirometry at baseline and found 9.5% prevalence of COPD at baseline. Um, and then they repeated that and on an average of about four and a half years later, that COPD prevalence had actually doubled to 19%. Again, it's a small single center study, so I think our prospective data will uh, lend a lot more. Uh, we'll be able to kind of validate these uh, initial findings. We'll also be able to look at the effect of antiretroviral therapy on lung function decline, given that there are conflicting data about whether ART may actually be driving COPD or protecting from COPD. And the randomized allocation with UNSTART uh, will allow us to address this. So I just want to conclude by thanking all of the, each and every one of the 1,026 sub-study participants who are contributing to the science, uh, our funding organizations, our 80 sites who are really doing the important groundwork on this uh, and continue to do the ground, important work as we continue to follow these patients, our data coordinating center, international coordinating centers, and our protocol team. So thank you.